Hi, my name's Matt, and I'd like to welcome you to this Zindiac video on the Portfolio Management Practice. This is part of the Realize Value step of the customer journey and part of our ITIL specialist course, Drive Stakeholder Value. Let's start off by looking at the purpose of portfolio management, which is to ensure that the organization has the right mix of programs, projects, products, and services to execute the organization's strategy within its funding and resource constraints. So in simple terms, what we as an organization are trying to do is achieve our organization strategy, achieve our vision, mission, goals and objectives. So everything we do in our organization is focused on, on achieving those goals and objectives. So when we look at our portfolio, we're asking two key questions about the portfolio. Is it sufficient to achieve our organization goals and objectives? Because if it isn't, we're going to need more projects, programs, products or services because we want to achieve those goals and objectives, yeah? So we'll have to add to it. If, if it is sufficient to achieve those goals and objectives, great, but is every program, project, product and service necessary to achieving those goals and objectives? Because if they're not necessary to doing that, then why are we doing it? Because everything should be focused ultimately on that organisation strategy on achieving those goals and objectives. So the key thing we're asking is, is the portfolio sufficient and are the constituent parts of the portfolio necessary? So they're the two key questions. The portfolio is a collection of assets into which an organisation chooses to invest its resources in order to receive the best return. So again, it's it's a it's a business case for achieving those that organize delivering the organizational strategy, achieving those organizational goals and objectives. And when I say organization, that can be the whole organization, you know, the limited company, or a part of it. So it might be a division, a department, a team a product, we can have those sub-portfolios as well. So each of those will need a effectively a business case of saying this is what we're doing to achieve these goals. Portfolio management plays an important role in allocating, deploying and managing resources across the organisation. And again, that question about are these things sufficient but also are they necessary because we don't want to waste resource doing things that aren't necessary. Portfolio management encompasses several portfolios, including product and service portfolio, program and project portfolio, which is obviously about change, and customer portfolio, which reflects commitments to serving certain service consumer groups and market spaces. Um, in simple terms, you can, you can have as many portfolios as you want, and you can chop your business up however makes sense to you. Portfolio can be applied, as I said, at every level of the organisation. So as at the total organisation, at country level, at division level, at domain level, whatever whatever titles you, you your organisation uses for the building blocks of the organisation, you can apply portfolio management at those levels. Portfolios can be created to manage resources, customer groups, business seg segments. So again, it's it's very flexible. It helps to achieve the optimum return on investment from a holistic system of assets. And figure 2.1 is trying to, to, sh to show that really. So over on the left hand side of the, the diagram, we've got available funds. And, and that's usually based on income. So it might be based on income from last year or it might be based on the budget we've been given, or it might be based on the predicted income this year. And, and obviously, it just depends how what level you're at and how your organisation does its accounting. 
Um, but we get some funds that we say, right, this is what we can spend. And those funds enable, so clearly we need some funds, so that's the enable bit, but then also limit. We, we can't spend more than the available funds, um, available resources. And the available resources then enable and limit products and services, or the products and service portfolio, which enable and limit what we can offer to customers, which enable and limit value to the organization. You know, the co created value, obviously, for our, for our customers, but the value our organization achieves from that. And that's the return on investment going back to available funds, which links back to what I said at the beginning, which is the available funds may be based generally on either how much money we made last year or perhaps how much money we think we're going to make this year. And again, obviously, some organisations will go into debt. They'll borrow money based on investing in the market to get return on investment later. Um, and there's obviously different ways of borrowing money. One of the ways is to issue shares. You issue shares in your, your organisation. Investors buy those shares you get that money, the organisation gets the money from the shares and spends it, that's one way of borrowing money. There are obviously other ways as well. And uh, just at the bottom there as well, we've got the programme and project portfolio. And in simple terms, you know, that's the change. So change is done by programme and projects. More, more focus really improvement. So we're not just changing for the sake of it, we're changing to improve. So that programme and project portfolio is really focused on the improvement we we need to make and typically in most organizations we'll have the the product and services portfolio is what we what we currently deliver and we have a projection of what that will deliver in terms of value to the organization and we want to do better than that you know that's kind of what we did if we just keep doing what we are doing we can expect to do what we did last year, maybe a little bit better or but about the same. But if we really want to, to have significant improvements, we're going to have to improve something. We're going to have to improve the quality of our products and services or have more products and services. But it's all about improvement or change, and that's where the programme and project portfolio comes in. We're now going to look at the success factors for portfolio management, and there is only one, which is ensure sound investment decisions for programs, projects, products and services within the organisation's resource constraints. So the first thing we need to do is capture and track in initiatives. So if we're not doing portfolio management already, the first step is really to understand what's going on what products and services do we have what programs and projects do we have in the organization so it's it's really largely a documenting exercise but it's understanding the current situation if start where you are we need to know where we are so that's what we're doing and as it is often sufficient for smaller organizations or relatively few initiatives so just doing that is a valuable exercise if you haven't done it already if conflicting priorities within an organisation ensure that all stakeholder perspectives are included and prioritised, most important initiatives are adequately resourced first. So that's very much in line with what we talked about in terms of agile delivery, having a product backlog, prioritising maybe using Moscow, so obviously the must-haves are our most important initiatives and we've prioritise and resource those first and then say okay what have we got left what should haves and could haves can we do as well strategic alignment is crucial for investment prioritization and that's where value drivers we've spoken about value drivers before obviously driving stakeholder value so we're trying to achieve those high level organization vision mission goals objectives what are the value drivers to achieving those and how do we align the portfolio to those so that's very much important for prioritization criteria and weights should be transparent and applied consistently and obviously transparency is one of the ITIL principles portfolios are key commu communication tools to stakeholders so everybody knows what's what the priorities are what we're most focused on what else we're going to do 
what the criterion weights are. That's again transparency. Portfolio ownership is especially important in product focused organizations where product teams have significant autonomy. So again, that's in agile type organizations where maybe a product manager is managing the products on a day-to-day -day basis and determining the product and sub-product priorities, then who who owns that portfolio and who who's delegating authority? Because for the product owner to do their job, they need to have the authority to make those decisions. So that's why it's really important. And as it says at the bottom, the focus of the practice is continuous prioritization because priorities can change. So that's that's why we need to be continually prioritizing what's the most important thing today. And again, having that agile approach with the sprints, iterative incremental development really supports that. Continual monitoring and review are a key element of optimizing a portfolio. And again, that fits in very much with Agile and the idea of going through a sprint. At the end of the sprint, you review what you've produced, you review how you've produced it. So that monitoring and review is very, a very Agile concept. Investments may fail to demonstrate value that was originally expected, or they may no longer align with the organization strategy. And it also enables resource distribution and indicates new investment opportunities. So again, as per Agile, the longer you go without having the review, the greater the risk that one of those things will happen, one of those negatives will happen. One of those risks, risk threats will impact. The shorter you go without having a review, you're reducing the risk that any of those things happen between reviews but obviously there's a cost to doing a review and also it, it, so you, you've got to balance the two out um, and it, it depends on your organization so i would certainly say no longer than a month you know go as, as scrum does a sprint is one month or less so don't go for longer than a month and then you may go shorter than that if it's appropriate Definition of done, obviously, again, from very much agile, a set of criteria defined to track, assess, and validate the value realization of a portfolio item. That is, when we deliver something, how do we, what's the definition of done? How do we know it's complete? How do we know it's finished? How do we know it's done? So tangible indicators, functional fiscal performance, and intangible indicators of experienced value, such as image, reputation, team spirit, morale, customer satisfaction and obviously if we're using those how do we how do we measure them investment health reports should be reviewed and measured against thresholds that would indicate a problem or a need for a closer inspection speed and level of intervention intervention should be in proportion to the relative size or importance of the portfolio item i.e if something's going wrong who intervenes and how quickly and again that's very much aligned with project program portfolio management as defined in Prince 2 MSP and portfolio management from from Axelor so you don't obviously you don't have to use those with ITIL but and if you're in the US you probably won't because you'll be using PMP equivalents but elsewhere you might be using those products to uh, review to do those reviews and that escalation and delegation of authority as well. Based on the findings from the ongoing reviews, new initiatives and interventions should be recommended by the investigative team. And again, that focus of continuous prioritization. So we can prioritize at portfolio level, program level, project level, products and services. It's that continual review. So as I said, probably one month or less, that time-based review, are we, are we doing the right thing at every level? So at every level of authority, the authorization entity is reviewing, are we are we doing, is, is what we're doing right? Is it sufficient to achieve our entity's goals, our entity's strategy? And is it is it sufficient? Do we need more? Is there is there any waste there? So that's the the, the focus. So that brings us to the end of this short video on the portfolio management practice and also 
brings us to the end of the ITIL Specialist Drive Stakeholder Value course. I hope you've enjoyed the video and the course. I wish you success with the exam and hope you will see me again in our direct plan and improve training course. Until then, have a great day.